everybody, it's Tyler here at Chessy Chance checking in team number 1678 Citrus Circuits coming out of California. And I'm here with Emporv, Zach, and Felipe. And we're going to be checking out this absolutely incredible machine that they have, Citrus Circuits, building great robots every single year. Of course, following that power cell journey, uh, a really cool turret. I love this uh, kicker mechanism they have as it comes up through. Of course, their climber, all this and more coming up on Behind the Bumpers. Giving you a voice. Making it loud our own way. Welcome, Welcome to, to the fun. fun. We'd like to thank Stryker for their continued support of First Updates Now. Stryker's internship portal is now open and available. Discover internships and rotational programs located around the world, including their headquarters in Michigan, when you go to careers.stryker.com and click on Students and Graduates. We'd also like to thank Kettering University. Kettering University is where robotic students come for their education. Over 30% of those who attend Kettering University were in high school robotics, and you can keep going with their BattleBots, VexU, eSports, and FIRST mentorship programs. If you are a U.S. student grades 8 through 12, scan the QR code to stay up to date on info and events happening at Kettering and get a free Kettering t-shirt when you sign up by December 12th, 2021. So starting on this robot here, let's talk about your intake. Talk to me a little about some of the design process to it, the thought that went into it, and just the general structure as well. Yeah, so of course, the general structure is we have these two plates here and they pivot around this point and there are three main shafts. So there's this one, this one, and this one. So um, essentially it's a bit... So it deploys with, a, with pist piston actuators on both sides. Sure. And it's held, held in with a surgical tubing. So once it deploys, once it deploys, it also knocks over this, this pop-up bar. And this actually allows us to have less variability in the contact of the ball sure. once we intake the ball. Um, so yeah, and all these three shafts are, are obviously rotating and that's what's like sucking in the balls and allowing us to, to put it into the indexer. So earlier you guys released a uh, reveal video, more about this robot sort of thing. Was there anything modified from the intake at all? Um, since the release video? Or just since like maybe last season, that sort of thing. Since last season, well, we have had slight modifications to like these plates. And uh, the pop-up bar also with the, with the locking mechanism so it doesn't pop up all the way. Um, besides that, it's been pretty much uh, with the same basic ideas. Sure. Well, let's keep moving on and going to that spindexer that we hear right now rotating around. Uh, let's talk more about uh, what went into that process, how it's been working out so far, and any changes you may have made as well. Yeah, so uh, basically our whole indexer and turret system is mounted to the same uh, single plate. So you'll see where everything's spinning in here. Uh, both our inner turret, that tower in there, as well as this inner donut are based around this one aluminum plate. Um, that plate, this one right here, is uh, mounted to our drivetrain uh, using... Uh, basically mounted to our drivetrain onto some cross tubes um, and it acts as like a stationary plate from which uh, both uh, systems can rotate. Um, so our Wheel of Doom has uh, some bearing stacks that rotate around the outer diameter of the plate and the uh, turret has some has bearing stacks that rotate around the inner diameter of it. Uh, both systems are driven by a uh, double gearbox right down here. Um, for which uh, drives a sprocket that goes around the Wheel of Doom as well as a sprocket that goes around our turret system. So two questions to ask here. One, where does the Wheel of Doom term come from? Because I remember a couple of Texas teams using that as well too, so curious on that. Yeah, I remember um, <laughs> you could ask our lead mentor, Mike, more about this, but yeah. uh, basically uh, it was just a term that he came up with during our, uh, or during our prototyping process. Um, God, so got so Texas from, is ripping him off. I yeah, get it. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, no, but he got it. He got it some from some past teams, uh, from past games. Uh, that's actually kind of where we took the inspiration from for this mechanism. Sure. Uh, was from some past games, um, and uh, yeah. Well, the other thing I want to hear is uh, when the spin dexter is running, we kind of heard that clicking noise every time it seemed to go around. Is that actually uh, from anything? Like, is it 
is that providing feedback at all or anything, or is it just based on how it's designed? No, that's just the uh, that's just some slight variation that there is in the bends of it. We okay. have a ton of rivets going around it, and every so often they'll click on a sure. uh, little bolt that's sticking up. <laughs> Makes sense on that. So let's keep going on. I really want to talk about. I love how in the middle here you're actually collecting the uh, power cells and shooting them through there. So uh, one the one thing I guess I got to ask is. Can we just talk about how they're actually getting into that structure there and what made you come up with doing something like this? Yeah, so uh, basically uh, during our prototyping process, we uh, found that with this system, it was really hard to keep some kind of uh, kicker wheel uh, like that would be stationary sure. outside of the turret structure. Um, we found that it jammed a lot. Um, because we like to keep this indexer two balls high so that when we already have balls in it uh, and we intake more of them, uh, it can like layer on top, right? It, it won't jam up with the ones that are on the bottom already. Um, and so what we decided to do with this kicker wheel uh, was to uh, use pneumatic actuation for it. Um, so it can uh, come out and in during our shooting sequence, uh, but during the rest of the game, uh, it is basically like it can't interfere with any of the balls yeah. that are being indexed. That's so cool. Well, let's keep moving on into your uh, shooter and your hood next. Uh, so, Porab, tell me a bit more about uh, just some of the structure to it. I'd love to hear more about the materials uh, that you have and just kind of went what went into your shooter in general. Yeah, absolutely. So, for our hood, uh, we have a 3D printed part. Um, essentially, the entire turret is this tower um, and in order to actually access the power cells from the indexer we essentially have um, an actuator so we have a solenoid from which this trigger can pop out which I can show in a moment um, and the trigger pops out and the spins and this intakes power cells from the moving indexer into our tower um, once it's here we essentially have this 3d printed part as our hood to guide um, you know the, the power cell through and then we have in our actual shooter we have um, a roller down here and then we have two upper rollers as well um, for the hood. This allows us to have great, great compression on the balls to make sure that you know we have accuracy with both used balls and ones that are new. Um, and we also have you know flywheels to make sure that we keep the inertia on our shooter. Sure. Um, and that way we don't have RPM drops while we're shooting. Yeah, and you actually have some additional weight on the side here it looks like as well too. Was that part of the initial concept or how did that work out? Uh, yeah, so basically all of our shooters that we've ever had have had some kind of flywheel on them. Um, we like to have the, like the extra mass to it to keep uh, the inertia constant um, and to have uh, more consistent shooting. Um, but what we decided to do with this flywheel, um, we decided that we would uh, belt it down. We would gear it down from the actual shooter itself so that um, when the shooter is speeding up, it takes more energy to actually speed that flywheel up, but it increases the overall inertia of the system um, and will basically like minimize the amount of uh, variation in uh, the shooter wheel uh, in, in its speed between shots. Sure, well, let's wrap up on this robot here, talking about your uh, climber mechanism on this uh, very interesting shape and structure that you have for that. And of course, it looks like it's able to translate on that switch as well too. So talk to me a little bit more about what's going on there. Yeah, so, uh, well, first of all, most of this robot is uh, based on our 2020 competition robot. Um, we just, the one major change that we made to it uh, was adding swerve modules to it. Yeah. Um, this added a couple Falcons. And so uh, to use up one fewer Falcons on this climber system, uh, we actually have it PTO uh, from this one Falcon. Uh, you can see it both goes to this climber gearbox yeah. that we have as well as uh, our intake. It belts up here and then belts all the way down to our stationary uh, upper roller, which then drives the rest of the intake. Um, now, on the climber in particular, um, we also had a completely different climber in 2020, uh, consisting of two hooks that folded down kind of like this over the uh, sides of the robot. Um, for this system, we decided to go with one hook. Uh, we found that a lot of teams, a lot of teams had a pretty uh, good time with just having one point of contact on the bar. Uh, it was a lot easier to manage. Um, and so we decided to go with that single point um, we made sure that we centered our hook over the uh, center of mass of the robot in uh, the uh, 
over its width um, so that the only variation would come from uh, its center of mass uh, front to back. Um, How's but, this been working out for you compared to your other climber that you had? It has been working out actually pretty well. We've used it almost every match so far and uh, it hasn't really failed us yet. Um, yeah, and uh, the overall assembly of this, uh, we went through a couple iterations of it over this off season. Um, but you can see it consists of a telescoping system uh, with a stationary bearing stage on the outside of each outer stage. Um, and then uh, the inner stage at the bottom of it um, has its own bearing stage, a bearing block, a 3D printed block, which plugs into it uh, and runs along the walls of the inside of the outer tube. Um, this allows us to have a pretty sturdy climber um, which can also uh, smoothly go up only using constant force springs. Sure. Um, so that then uh, we don't have to worry about our motor driving it up otherwise. Uh, we just have to release this string a certain amount and it just goes up however much we want. Well, Citrus Circus, thank you so much for taking the time to tell us about this robot, making amazing machines every single year. So can't wait to see, of course, how this works at Chessie Champs and keeps performing, but looking forward to future seasons as well with your team. Thanks a lot for taking the time. Yeah, thank you so much. Thanks to Kettering University for their support of this video. Don't just sit in class. Kettering University is the only school in the U.S. that allows you to work as an engineer your first year with their three-month-on, three-month-off co-op programs. If you are a U.S. student grades 8 through 12, scan the QR code to stay up to date on info and events happening at Kettering and get a free Kettering t-shirt when you sign up by December 12th, 2021. We'd like to thank Stryker for their continued support of First Updates Now. Stryker's internship portal is now open and available. Discover internships and rotational programs located around the world, including their headquarters in Michigan, when you go to careers.stryker.com and click on students and graduates. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring the bell to stay up to date on our new videos. Keep the conversation going and provide your input to our content. Watch our live shows at twitch.tv forward slash first updates now. Join our Discord at discord.gg forward slash first updates now. And check out Fun FTC on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And First Updates Now on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and Twitter.